Hi, I'm Richard. I'm from Fishing for Schools in the Yorkshire and uh, Peaks area. And today we're going to be doing a short, informative video about fly fishing, aren't we, Logan? Yeah. And we're going to be putting the rod together, showing how to put on the leader and the flies. And then hopefully, Logan is going to catch a fish, aren't you? Yeah. Do you think you're going to catch a fish? Yes. Good boy. So, the easiest way to assemble a rod is to put the thin bits together first. So, this one, we have to line up all the rod rings. There we go. And the next one, this one. That's it. This one goes on here. And then last but not least, this one. There we go. Good boy. Which has a tiny loop. That's got a little, little loop at the bottom to put the hook in, yes. And then we need to put the fly reel on the end. And that goes in like that. And this is quite a short fly rod. So it's good for children, isn't it? What we don't want is great big long rods that children can't use. It's always best to make sure that the rod suits the size of the child. So this is the loop on the end of the fly line, which goes through here. And I'm gonna have to stand up now. Ooh. My old legs will let me. And then through here, are you going to do it? And I'll hold it like this and then you put it through the, the rings. Yes? It's fiddly, isn't it? But it's important we do this properly. So next thing we're going to do, Logan, is we're going to put the leader and the tippet on. So this is very difficult to see and this is why we use this to go to the fly rather than putting the fly on the end of here because that way the fish won't see the fly line and they will, they will think that they're going to eat an insect or something like that, yes? So we're going to make the leader up about, that's about six feet, which in modern terms is about, what's that, three meters? And then we want, because we're only going to fish one, one, one fly, just another three feet like that. And this will be difficult to see on the camera but I go through this loop here with the leader material and then I make a knot and the knot we're going to do is called a half tucked blood knot. So I spin the loop about four or five times and then I put the line back through the loop. Wet it so that it doesn't burn when you pull it tight. There we are, and then we trim the end off that we've made. See that? We're going to put the fly on now, Logan, and we're going to use a fly called a buzzer. And this represents a midge that hatches in the water. You know, it comes up in the water and then hatches on the surface and flies away. And that's what trout eat a lot of. Okay, so this one is going to be tied on. It's brown and it's got a yellow cheek to it. So the line goes through there, which I've managed to do first time without my glasses on. And then we're going to tie it on with the same knot that we used to tie on the fly line. There we are. And we test that, like that. So we know that it won't pull out of the fish. Chop off the bit at the end. Are you watching? Now, because we're going to be putting the fish back, we need to take the barb off because we don't want to hurt the fish unnecessarily. So in this box, I've got some bits and pieces, my debarbing pliers. So we grip it in there and squeeze it down. And you can see the barbs come off. 